And I'm looking for something. Actually, I'm looking for someone. Is that someone you? I want DAO partners. And you can be my DAO partner right now. It's real easy. Just go to DAOpartners.com, sign up, and join me. There are three things that I would like for you to be able to do. Any one of them or all of them. Beautiful. Number one, you will make draw. So you can be our DAO partner, even if you don't go to the website, but I hope you do. Number two, share. Share this message and let other people know about becoming DAO partners. And number three, help us financially. Donate on a monthly basis, even if it's small. Allah loves the thing that you do regularly. Even if it's small, more than the thing that you do that's really big, but you only do it once. Join me as a DAO partner. Do it now. Click, 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 click. A way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is a way of life, a complete way. Thanks to all of you for watching, sharing, and spending your time with us on Guide Us TV. And remember, tell everyone, stay guided <laughs> with Guide Us TV. Stay guided with Guide Us TV. The wise old Dao says we all need guidance in our life. So remember, get guided with Guide Us TV. Coming to you almost live from our studios right here. And, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, it looks a little bit different tonight, doesn't it? So if you're used to seeing all of the flashy background and now, now it looks like a cartoon. <laughs> Something from the Pink Panther. Maybe that's where it's from. Anyway, <laughs> I'll do a little bit, a lot of me. We are coming to you from wherever we are and we're enjoying being with you and we've got two count them not one but two special guests with us tonight and the first and foremost of our special guests is of course Richard Kiefer Richard give me us a big salam what do you got what do you got going on there oh you're muted Okay. There we go. There you go. Yeah, we to unmute ourselves. Uh, alhamdulillah, Juma Day, always good. And um, what the heck is your of... background? What is that? I I see part of. Uh, I see something it's just, black. Uh, it's just it's just curtain the rest of the way around and a shelf with a light on it. So. Okay, but we can see over the top of it. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wanted, you to, I wanted you to see the shelf and the light. Okay. That's nice. Something a little different. Very cool. Yeah, I'm Very cool. Try to look something. So. How are things where you are in Ann Arbor, Michigan? Good, good, good. Um, uh, our numbers are coming down. Oh, um, that's the best news I've heard of for a long time. Your numbers are. So, wait a minute. Is that in your bank account or is that with the COVID? Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, those numbers have always been down, but the, uh, you know, the, the the COVID numbers, people are doing a little better. There's more um, vaccinations going on, uh, more conformity to the masking and the vaccination requirements. Um, and so uh, people are kind of coming, kicking and streaming, but they're nevertheless coming in. You know, I heard, a, a, I think it was the governor of West Virginia last week and he said you know we only have one bullet in the gun to take care of covid 
and that's vaccination. And uh, so he, you know, he's a Republican guy there, and uh, encouraging people to. Uh, I love to that speak. guy. I heard that it too. He, it was like down home. I'm hey, just going to yeah, tell you how bullet. it is. Put <laughs> one bullet in the gun and fire. So, uh, so yesterday I went and got my flu shot on top of all that. So I've done all I can do. And uh, I'm grateful to uh, the prevent the, the providence of Allah who takes care of us and uh, uh, resting in him and uh, that all things will be well. So inshallah, someday they will be back to normal. I'm, I'm weary of the mask, I must confess. Um, we, you know, we had reached a point at the masjid where we didn't have to wear them, and now we're back at them again, and uh, I hopefully that soon we can uh, lay them aside. They, uh, they they get warm. <laughs> How can I say? They just get warm and... Uh, well, I understand where you're coming from because uh, the same thing is true, I think, of, of almost everybody out here. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, we, we need... Uh, we need to we have we have to have some kind of control on the whole thing. What do you think? Yep. I don't know. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We've got you know there's some people out protesting things, but uh, like the medical centers here in the Detroit area, there's a number of very large, uh, the University of Michigan, the Henry Ford system, and uh, a number of other large systems, and they're all requiring mandating vaccination for the, all their employees, and we've had uh, some some employees quit and in protests and i say well you know to me that's like cutting off your nose to spite your face if you're willing to wait uh, wait a minute i, I want to know now cutting off your nose to spite, to spite your, face, your face how yep. original is that may i quote you that's not original. <laughs> that, that is that is so old. These, these people are, you know, they're going. Oh, well, I'm 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 standing up for my rights, so I'm going to surrender my career as a nurse. And I was just like, I think that's foolish. Um, well, time will tell. But uh, uh, people are doing what they need to do, I guess, and uh, <clears throat> hopefully they'll. Uh, let's let's introduce my uh, next guest. What do you think? Yeah, let's go north. Yeah, let's no, go from north. Michigan. You're going north south. East. No, we're no, going to go south. northeast. South from Michigan. Huh? From no, actually, Michigan? No, yeah. yeah, he's north, <laughs> man. He's, north, he's yeah. northeast of us. Is that right? Yeah, Let's find out. So. Let's ask him. We have a special guest with us tonight all the way from... Let's see. Uh, add the pin. Replace the pin. There we go. There he is. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. He's got his mask on. Whoa. Alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, my dear brother. Yes, in New Brunswick, we are uh, we're asked and required to wear the mask because in, because of the the increase of cases. So even going to the mosque today, I, I was wearing my mask. So that's why I'm doing this to show other people that live in, in Canada that we still have to wear these to protect ourselves and to, most importantly to protect others. So, yeah, I think that that's a great idea. And, and us putting these masks on during the show, I think it helps reinforce the idea that guys, just because you're seeing us on the air with no mask, trust me. Uh, I was standing outside in my yard just a few minutes ago talking to my next door neighbors, little guys, and we were playing basketball, and not, but I stayed uh, way <laughs> over six feet away from them, and I had my mask on, and then I met their mother, uh, or uh, their aunt, actually, and uh, we kept big distance, big distance, and mask, everything. Because, uh, you know, guys, this is what we need to do. Like the governor of West Virginia said, we got one bullet, bang. And if you don't you put that bullet in a gun and shoot it at that COVID virus, well, yeah, oh, yeah. there you go. James, back to you. <laughs> yeah, so I, 
anyway, there's there's that. Plus, there's some other things that's going on in, in the Fredericton area. So it's kind of interesting the things that are happening. So I, it's good. All right. Okay. Well, let's find out what that governor actually said. And yes. His name is Governor Jim Justice. Uh -huh and members of the West Virginia COVID-19 Pandemic Response Leadership Team. And I would not like to put that on a business card. Anyway, uh, the members of the West Virginia COVID-19 Pandemic Response Leadership Team held the news briefing, and I, that would not be brief. Anyway, today to up date the public on the state's latest pandemic response. Let's find out what it is and let's go there now. Yeah, let's play that. Well, that didn't work. Okay, let's see another way. Hello everyone, it's uh, Wednesday, September 15th. We've had a little bit of a uh, internet glitch or whatever that's delayed is a little bit here, but uh, yeah, we uh, know what that is. As I told you on Monday, you know, a lot more people are going to die. I've told you over and over and over that uh, there's no need, in my opinion, to even think about, you know, from the standpoint of the mask, you know, you're if you mandate mask really and truly what you're doing is you're you're basically pen penalizing some the mask in my opinion I'm still not convinced or are, are going to really help us in a really significant way I applaud you know our school systems that have decided to go that way and uh, we surely want to protect our kids first and foremost but uh, but I also would just tell you just this, that, uh, you know, Dr. Tom uh, Takubo was with us and, uh, and he passed on a statement to me that I related on to everyone and because I thought it was really profound. He said, we have reached a point to where now, now we're in a situation to where for the most part, People that have been vaccinated are going to be protected. So we've reached a point in time, and his, his, his words, that really this disease has become a disease of the unvaccinated. Now, a lot of people don't like me saying that, but really, when it really, really boils down to it, it is a profound point that a doctor has made and made to me. And I think that it is... Uh, extremely profound if you think about it the the chances if you're not vaccinated of you getting this are moving up each and every day now we're very very hopeful that what's going to happen is we're going to reach a peak and then we're going to turn the other way but we're not there yet are we and in the meantime if you're not vaccinated and you have not had COVID, you're running a big risk. And that's what, you know, our good Senator, Senator Katuba, Kubo, I, 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 I always struggle with that, but, but uh, passed on, which I think is real knowledge. And, and that knowledge, again, centers around just this. If you're not vaccinated today, there's a really, really good chance, you know, that you're going to have at least a legitimate chance of ending up with this. If you survive it, after you survive it, your antibodies will truly help you. There's no question, you know, there's a, it's very argumentative that it could be that they will they will be as good as the vaccinations are. Whoa, the medical wait a community. Hold on. Is he saying that if you get the COVID virus and survive it, then uh, you'll be better than a vaccination? Is that what he just said? That's a big word, if. 
Ah, if okay. You survive. All right. Well, That's huge. Small word, big meaning. True. Uh, say that again. Small word, big meaning. Very much. Yeah, I F. It's a very, it's a two-letter word, but it always, <laughs> yeah, it always comes right before a really big statement, doesn't it? <laughs> if, uh oh, if, oh yeah, oh. If the rabbit hadn't stopped to eat a carrot, <laughs> the wolf wouldn't have caught him. Yeah, I cleaned that up, right? <laughs> Anyhow, whoa, yeah. Richard, yeah, I think you knew what that meant, right? <laughs> so, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, yep. Yeah. Yep, the tortoise and the hare, yep. Yep. That, or well, the that's, other, another, or the, that, yep. that's a rabbit and a wolf, a fox rabbit, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway. Well, anyway. One of those things, yep. We got caught anyway. All right. So, let's come back to James. James, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, uh, these days, uh, I got a visitor from Quebec. He's come down to visit me. I haven't seen him in three years. So, it's nice. And we're going to be going on a road trip. So, this should be rather interesting. Oh, you're going to be on the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again, right? Yeah. <laughs> you actually have a nice singing voice. I'm surprised. You've probably uh, done some singing in your past. you got a tin ear, baby. <laughs> hey, I've heard, I've heard some people sing, and I've heard some bad people sing. Trust me, if you heard me sing in comparison to you, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know that I do like to give the adhan, but uh, I noticed some birds paralyzed <laughs> when they like fall out of the sky. <laughs> like, what the heck was that? <laughs> oh, please! If I do that, it's like, oh, stop! It's torture. <laughs> yeah, the, my recitation of Quran is also really poor, and. Uh, so so many brothers are polite and sisters they're so polite to me and they're saying oh uh, that uh, that sounds um, uh, that sounds uh, uh, different <laughs> yeah how have you actually heard people recite the quran that it brings tears to your eyes oh, well i did, i get that all the time <laughs> oh, stop please <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not exactly what I meant, but yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of the Quran, and uh, we we are, so I think it's a good chance for us to to check out something of the Quran. Today, we heard something in the Juma Khutbah about the one of the verses. I think it's in, uh, if I'm not wrong, it's in Surah... 3359, I think. Let me, it is still doesn't. Wait a minute. I don't need the governor on there for that. Uh, 3359. Okay, let me see what it says. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here it is. Let's listen to this. And this we heard in the Juma Khutbah today. Uh, actually, he talked about it, and then he recited it in the Salat. Very beautiful recitation, by the way. And he's from IOK. You know, I'm always talking about IOK, the international, what's the, online, national, uh, no, wait a minute. Something online knowledge. Yeah, I think that's pretty close. Anyway, it's here in uh, Diamond Bar and uh, let's let's listen to this and forget what I said <laughs> let's listen inshallah ya ayyuhan nabiy qul li azwajika wa banatika wa nisa'il mu'minina yudnina alayhinna min jalabi 
ذلك أدنى أن يعرفن فلا يؤذين وكان الله غفورا رحيما O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to bring down over themselves part of their outer garments. That is more suitable that they will be known and not be abused. And ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. So that is not the ayah, but that's a beautiful ayah as well. It's talking here about the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty. He's actually talking directly to the Prophet. And he says, Ya you an Nabi, O oh, my Prophet, Kul is wajika, tell your, do your uh, wives, wajib, uh, wajika, and, and wabinatika, and that's your daughters, and the believing women that whenever they go out to draw over themselves their outer garments, cover themselves completely up. And that is more suitable that they should be known and not harmed. And Allah is ever, forever forgiving and forever most merciful. So this is something for us to reflect on as well. And uh, I think that opens up a tone for us to talk about the comparison between uh, all of us uh, online today, uh, James, which is also known as Habib, by the way, and um, Richard and myself are all former Christians. And we came to Islam because something in Islam attracted us. And so let's talk to Richard now and ask him what was it in, uh, is in Christianity compared to this verse we just heard? Uh, what does it say about the women, uh, how they should dress? Richard? Well, you know, I, um, I substitute teach in the public schools and uh, I started back this week. And uh, it was a reminder of how scantily the girls of America dress Ooh. these days. And uh, in Islam, our women are instructed to be modest, to cover themselves. And it's so interesting. Anytime you watch, you know, even an old Christian movie like the Ten Commandments or one of those kind of things, the women are always covered and uh, very modest and have a headpiece. And um, that's that just speaks volumes as to uh, respecting and honoring women um, for who they are in their whole person and not just an attractive body. And um, that's uh, that's that's just a beauty of understanding the creation that God provided as a help me for the spouse and for the husband and not for the whole universe, too. I'm going to try and find a good word here. Gawk. Yeah. 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 Gawk. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to gawk at her. Like, wow, look yeah. at that. Yeah. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. You know, that, that's not Islam. Actually, oh. in, in the Quran, there's something else that's very, very potent. And uh, I think that we'll find that in chapter 24, verse uh, 30, 31, I think. Let me see if I can find that right now. Uh, 30, 31. Uh, yeah. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about something here too, guys. L look at this. I'm gonna show you now top right because the Arabic works from the right side to the left side of the page. So be sure you know that. So uh, on the right side, you just go for, from there over to the left side. And the first word is wa, which means and. That little, looks like a comma. That is a wow, and it means and. And then there you see a, a, a similar looking thing, but it has a big stem coming out of it. That's two letters. And it's got two dots over the circle. And that is a ka, 
and then a lamb. Now, I'll give you a little Arabic lesson, right? <laughs> so, the lamb it has the sound of an L, and our L goes this way, all right? Uh, like that. The, the lamb goes that way, and it has kind of a curl underneath it. Now, take a look at it again. So it says wakul, ka'ul, wakul, lil mu'minati. Now the reason I wanted to say, talk about this is because since when do you start any sentence? You don't know somebody, you just walk up to them and you say and. And I've talked about this so many, so many verses in the Quran where people will start out wa. And you say, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wa, wa, if, if you mean and, and you're not swearing by something, because you can also do that, but you're saying wa, cool. So I want to know what was the verse before it. All right? Okay, so let's do that. Let's go backward. Now I'm going to pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. And this is a very short verse compared to the other one. But you see it says, cool right up on the top right hand side of the page it says cool and that's the same thing with no wa in front of it okay cool mu'minina the difference is mu'minina and the other one is wa mu'minati okay so say to the believing men all right that's what it's telling us here Say to the believing men, Kul lil mu'minina, Yagulbu min abesarihim, Wa yah, Wa yah, Wa yah, Fadu azka, Lahum. All right, I'm going to stop right there. The trans. Let's listen to somebody who can recite it nice. Ready? Listen. No, 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 no. We want not the waku. We want the. Come on now. There it is. قل للمؤمنين يغضوا من أبصارهم ويحفظوا فروجهم ذلك أزكى لهم إن الله خبير بما يصنعون Tell the believing men to reduce some of their vision and guard their private parts. That is purer for them. Indeed, Allah is acquainted with what they do. All right, now, so there is a setup for this. First and foremost, and I want, to, I want to make sure I make this point. First and foremost, Allah, he is talking to the men. And he's saying to, to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to tell the believing men what? Let's look at it again. Tell the believing men they should lower their gaze, lower their volume of their gaze, not stare, don't be like hanging like, whoa, look at that, you know, just if you glance up, okay, you, that's all right. But if you start staring like, whoa, so lower the volume, like you turn down the volume on something. Yeah. So, cool, little mook me, Nina. Min they, they're looking, their they're vision, okay? Lower the vision. And it's talking now to the men first. A lot of people skip over that as though it's just about the women. No, the men are right here. So guys, lower your gaze. Don't be staring at these women, okay? And then it goes on, and they should guard their chastity, guard your private parts. 
don't get involved. Don't be like, whoa, I'm thinking about that. Oh, no, 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 no way. Okay. Zalika azka lahum. And this is from the word zaka. Azka is from the word zaka. And that means pure. Zakat is purification of wealth, and this is purification of yourself. That's more pure for you, okay? And then Allah is saying, in the laha, khabirum bima yes na'un. For sure, Allah is well acquainted with what they're doing. Okay. Now, the way that Allah said that, leads to the next thing because look Allah is well aware of what they're doing but now let's move it up move it up uh, and in case these guys are not doing what we just instructed them to do aha and wakul uh, mu'minati and say to the women of the believers Yagbudna min absarihina. By the way, the verbs can be genderized here. So you know that Allah is talking to the women, and when He's talking to the man, you can just see that. You can hear it and see it at the same time. So Allah is telling the Prophet and tell the believing women that they should also reduce their gaze. Don't be looking at the guys. And they should guard their chastity, guard their private parts. But then it goes on to say, because the men are the ones that are going to be the most guilty of doing this, and display not your adornment. Don't show off your beauty. You know, you spend all this time at the beauty parlor, you want to get all fixed up, and your hair's all so and so, and your makeup is just like this, and fingernail polish, and you got all that, and the false eyebrow, uh, false eyelashes, and the eyebrow painted on it, yeah. And of course, no beard on the ladies. <laughs> Hope. Anyway, so, you, you know, think about it. You do all of that for what? For what? For people you don't know. Yeah. And even if you know them, if they really liked you, why didn't they like you as God created you? Why do you have to show off like this and actually put on a false impression in front of these people? Why? I mean, that's a question. You, and it's one you have to ask yourself. Why? Why am I doing all of this? Okay. And now let's go on further. And then Allah gets into it. He really gets into the description. He said, uh, Don't show off the adornment, illa, except what is apparent of it. In other words, some women, they have, you know, a very beautiful face. So they can cover up part of their face or all of their face if they want to. But that is, you know, they need to be able to see where they're going, and they've got to be able to talk, and except for, you know, today, <laughs> we're all wearing the mask anyway, so that's not a problem, unless you want to make it a problem, but the idea is, don't show off your adornment, don't show off your beauty, except now, here's where we get into the exceptions. Except to your husbands or their fathers or your uh, uh, husband or let me go down to the translation here yeah tell the believing women to reduce some of their vision and guard their private parts don't expose their adornment their beauties except which necessarily appears thereof and to wrap a portion of their head covers over their chest now, that is what it says. The chimar was a head cover. It was not a, a neck scarf like a lot of women think it is. No, it was a head cover, 
called a kimar, and it was kind of like in the back of their head. They wore it kind of like cover up your ponytail kind of a thing, you know. And he's saying, draw the kimar over Juyu Behinna. That's all the way down, all the way. Like if you put a towel on your head and you drop the towel in front and back all the way down uh, to, to about your stomach area, all right? Why? Because it says Juyu Behinna. Okay, what is Juyu Hub? Huh? Well, it's related to another word, very similar, that means your chest. That's a good way to say it. Cover your chest up, all right? And this is exactly what Allah is telling you, the women, to do. Cover yourselves up. Except now we're going to go into those that, that don't need to see you all covered up like that. Except... It, don't expose your adornment except to your husbands and your fathers and your husband's fathers, your sons, your husband's sons and their brothers. Uh, let's see, their brother's sons, in other words, your brothers and your brother's sons, your sister's sons and your women. So that is... Oh, oh, and the, what your right hand possess, or those male attendants that have no physical desire, or children who are not yet aware of the private aspects of women, and don't let the women stamp their feet to get the attention, to make known that they're, they're concealing their adornment. Because women used to wear anklets, uh, ankle bracelets and things like that, and it would make noise, you know, like uh, louder than wind chimes. Yeah, chink, 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 chink. And he said, don't do that. And turn to Allah in repentance, all of you, all the believers, that you might succeed. I'd like to put that in perspective, though. First, Allah is talking to the men. Then he's telling the women, and specifically why that they need to do it because the men are not gonna most of the men even Muslim men are still gonna look and go whoa no 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 so cover up cover up be sure that when you go out in public you're not showing off beauty this is the opposite of the Western mentality they're they're making a lot of money out of you they're making money selling you the perfumes and the cosmetics and the, the hunky-dory little things that you can put on the trinkets and all the clothing. Uh, yeah, and you pay a lot of money for a little bit of clothes too. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is not Islam. And as Richard was telling us just now, he was telling us that when you see any pictures for the Christians, I'm talking about the Christians, you see any of the pictures of what was the, like Mary and uh, the women of that time or any, any religious women, especially even the Jewish women today, they cover yeah. up. They don't go out here showing off and do stuff like that if, unless they're not really religious, okay? So if you want to get favor with the law, if you'd like to make your life easy here and in the hereafter, this is the way to do it. Simple. Yep. Worship none but Allah. And then obey his commandments. Simple. What do you say, Richard? Uh probably time for a break. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, that's we could do that. Set it up. Tell everybody okay. what to do. Well, we're gonna take a few moments and you're gonna step aside, but stay tuned and stay guided with Guide Us TV. Guide Us TV, I like that. Guide Us TV, first Islam channel in U.S. Thanks to all of you for watching, sharing, and spending your time with us on Guide Us TV. And remember, tell everyone, stay guided <laughs> with Guide Us TV. Stay guided with Guide Us TV. Guide Us TV. Welcome back. Uh, we're coming to you live, almost live, from uh, way up north of Maine in uh, 
the end of the earth <laughs> out there <laughs> here, here, here in Michigan and out in uh, La La Land out in California. And we're so grateful that you've Whoa, come our way. Oh, wait a minute. La uh, La Land. Now, come on. That LA, was... LA. La La Land, yeah. Oh, well, okay. Uh, yeah, that's true. That and, is, uh, that's La La Land. Gonna, so, but we're, gonna, we're talking about it. We're talking about a very important thing in, in terms of uh, uh, the modesty that's uh, taught within um, Islam and uh, the ideal for women to, to protect themselves and to cover themselves. And I was just mentioning uh, that in uh, Surah 41, starting at verse 19, there's a great warning uh, that Allah gives us in, in the Quran in regard to the day of judgment when even our eyes will testify against us. The things we have seen and looked at um, that it actually talks about our hearing, our sight and our skins uh, testifying uh, as to what we were doing. So I, I kind of look at that like things we were hearing and listening to, things we were looking at and our skins, maybe perhaps things we we're, you know, what we were doing with our body, what we we're walking to and seeing and acting. And um, there's this great, great judgment coming on that. And uh, man, it's time to, you know, as was mentioned earlier, to lower your gaze and not look at, at women that aren't yours. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Surah 41, that's a, that's a good uh, a good thing there at 20. It's just talking about uh, uh, when they have reached it, it says their hearing and their sight and their skins will testify against them regarding what they used to do. All right, let's play that. Verse 19 and 20. Okay. Let's take a look at that. MashaAllah. وَيَوْمَ يُحْشَرُ أَعْدَاءُ اللَّهِ إِلَى النَّارِ فَهُمْ يُوزَعُونَ And mention, O Muhammad, the day when the enemies of Allah will be gathered to the fire while they are driven, assembled in rows. حَتَّى إِذَا مَا جَاءُوهَا شَهِدَ عَلَيْهِمْ سَمْعُ until when they reach it, their hearing and their eyes and their skins will testify against them of what they used to do. And they will say to their skins, Why have you testified against us? They will say, We were made to speak by Allah, who has made everything speak. And he created you the first time, and to him you are returned. And you were not covering yourselves lest your hearing testify against you, or your sight, or your skins. But you assumed that Allah does not know much of what you do. And that was your assumption which you assumed about your Lord. It has brought you to ruin, and you have become among the losers. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Yeah, that is uh, your skin, and all your body parts are going to testify against you on the Day of Judgment. And there's nothing we can do about it, because Allah is going to make everything talk. You know, your feet are going to say, you know where he made me walk? 
Yeah. And your hands are going to be saying, you know what he made me do? And your eyes and your mouth and your even your tongue, especially the lisan, the tongue, is going to testify every word that you ever said. Be it good, be it bad, be it uh, disruptive or hateful, everything that you have ever said is going to be shown to you. Because Allah, He already knows. He knew from the very beginning what you would do, but He let you do it. He let you because we do have freedom of choice. We don't have free will, but we always have freedom of choice to try to do something. And sometimes we do it and sometimes we don't, but we don't have free will. Alhamdulillah for free choice or maybe not so alhamdulillah. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. Let's bring, let's bring Habib in here to talk about that. Uh, what do you think about this? Habib. You mean free choice? Yeah. We got free choice, but we don't have free will. No, I never I never could understand the whole I, the concept of free will. What do, what does that actually well, mean? Well, if you read the Bible, there's two times that the Lord's prayer is mentioned and it says God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So everything that is done in the heavens, in the universe, is all by Allah's will. He wills something. He says, kun fayakun, be, and it is. I just give you the Arabic side of it, the same thing. Kun fayakun means be, and it is. So, we don't have will. We can't say, I can't command something. I want to have an ice cold glass of water here in my hands with eight ice cubes in it. Boom. Uh, oh, it didn't happen. Uh, boom. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I got coffee anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. But we have choices. I can choose to do things, and I can try to do impossible things. I can try. I can jump. And I want to jump to the moon. All right, well, go ahead, jump. I'll go up to this cliff so I can get a good start. Okay, woo, woo. Okay, that's not a good choice. <laughs> but I have choices, but never free will. Does it make sense? Oh, yes, it does. And, but a lot of people think, you know, that they have, you know, free will. But in reality, it's choices. And the choices that you make either lead you in the right way or the wrong way. Absolutely. So the choices that we have, you absolutely have the free choice to do whatever you'd like to do. Here in America, I don't know about Canada so much, but uh, we can ask uh, Habib to tell us about that. But here in America, you do have the freedom of expression. You have a lot of freedom, but you have limits. Everything here in this country has limits. Oh yeah, because you don't have the freedom to go over and hit somebody without having to pay some kind of a, a penalty for that. You don't have the right to smash your car into something or somebody. That is not your right. So you have choices. Now, you could do it, but here in this country, you'll pay for what you did. Now, things that are between you and Allah, you can try to worship Allah through something that you created and you say, well, I, 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 I want this to communicate to God. I'm going to pray to this and it's going to take my message up to God. It's not going to work. But you could try it. You have the freedom of choice. You can choose to worship a rock, a stick, a stone, a bone, a person, an animal, a snake, whatever you would like to worship. You have that free choice. But on the day of judgment, none of those things are going to be there for you. The only thing going to be there is the one who created all of the universe to start with. And he's the one you're going to have to answer to because your body is going to tell everything you did. Make sense? Yes, it does. 
Any comment? Ah. Uh. I was thinking something and I it sort of just went poof. It, it, it'll come yeah, back to me yeah, in a second. You know what? That's from a law, too. <laughs> oh, yes. You just proved a point and you actually made me feel better because I do that all the time. <laughs> oh, please. I was doing this when I was younger, so it's not because of age. I'll point this out to you now. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, what do you say about all of this? Uh, any, any forgetfulness and that kind of thing, it starts long before people our age. Uh, I just left, uh, you know, a thousand high school kids and they're, they forget every day. You know, I forgot my homework. I forgot this. Yeah, I forgot well, wait that. a minute. Wait a minute. That's, that's controlled forgetfulness. <laughs> I know. I know. But, <laughs> Isn't uh, that more like, uh, what is it? Uh, selective forgetfulness. Selective forgetfulness? Yeah, I yeah. like that. It's that, like that selective works. hearing, selective forget, forget, forgetfulness. Yeah. So back, back to what you were saying, when you, when you, you know, look at, you know, free will, right? And you think to yourself, well, how, in reality, this does not work. Free choice, yes. You you understand it, and you know, it makes more sense. But with free choice, you you have okay. What is your goal here with your choices? You know, where when you're looking at the two places where you can go, and especially as Muslims, it's like, do you really want to go to Hellfire, or do you want to go to Paradise? So, if you want to go to paradise, you really have to consider the right choices. And it's like the first things first, Allah, help me to make the right choices. Ah, I like that. Allah, help me make the right choice. Oh, yeah. It, you know what? When I put my head on the ground 30 years ago, and I said, I was thinking about being a Muslim, but I didn't know what I should do. And my friend told me, it's not about you and me. It's not about you and your father, you and your wife, you and your congregation, you and the business associates. It's between you and him. Go talk to him. And I was like, what? Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa. And it was the middle of the night. So I walked out behind my dad's house and I'm trying to think, what should I do? And I'd seen this Muslim for three months. I've been watching him do his salah, salah, salah. And I said, well, that, that putting your head on the ground, that sounds like a good idea. So I just made a prostration, a sajda. And with my head on the ground, I said these words, God, guide me. I didn't know what else to say. I, <laughs> I was a prayer leader at one time. I was like, you know, yeah, but... And I've always been able to talk, yak, 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 yak. But on that occasion, the only words that I could say is, God, guide me. Edina, Edina, Edina. Guide us, guide us, guide us. And that's why we call this station Guide Us TV. How about that? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, I, that was my prayer too. I I looked up into the heavens and I just said, God, you're gonna have to reveal yourself. You're gonna have to guide me to uh, to reveal yourself to me. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, and he did. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Well, I want to ask. And, and, and with I, that, I want to I want to ask uh, Habib. Did you just do something like that too? <laughs> Actually, yes. Uh, for me, for like many years before I converted to Islam, I was always praying to God to guide me to the right path. And it was, a, it was actually the word path. So mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting that that's actually in the Quran. That, <laughs> so uh, the, the other thing, too, when I talk to, to brothers, and I talk to quite a few brothers from different countries, and they, they're making plans and all this year, and they're asking me for advice, the first piece of advice that I tell them is 
pray and seek the guidance of Allah for the decisions you want to make so that you know that you're making the right decisions. Yeah. Because I it doesn't matter what I tell them, but it does matter what Allah wants for them. I think that makes a lot of sense. I really do. And before we wrap everything up, we only got a few minutes left in the program, but I would like to offer that if anybody would like to call in, the phone number is right there on the screen, 1-800-971-4383. If you're watching this in the future and you'd like to call in, we are on every single night, 9 o'clock New York time and 6 o'clock California time. And it's like 4 o'clock in the morning in Mecca or something like that. So, yeah. Anyway, so Habib... And 10 o'clock in Canada. Ten, oh, well, what? 10 o'clock in Atlantic Canada and 10.30 in Newfoundland. <laughs> you guys split up the 30? Oh, come on. Are you serious? Hey, Newfoundland and Labrador, they're a little different. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Oh, my goodness gracious heavens to Betsy Snakes Alive. Anyway, oh, yeah. Richard, tell us what time it is when you uh, what, when we come on where you are. It's 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. Because and it'll be 10 o'clock when we go off. Nine Eastern, ten, Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Ah, even though you're in Michigan, you're still Eastern. Yes, we are. You we're on the western the end of the Eastern. Yeah, we're at the western end of the Eastern, but we're, we're, we're definitely the Eastern. Oh, you're the western end of the Eastern? Okay, that That's makes it. a yep. lot of sense. Um, yep. Maybe not. But, uh, another a little bit of time, and we'll turn the clocks back, and we'll be, well, whatever we used to, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, there's time things get me all mixed up. I wish we just had a time, just left it alone. Um, yeah. But we we seem to like to keep keep it daylight until ten o'clock at night so golfers can golf. Well, uh, let's golfing. let's go back to our subject. We've been talking yeah. about choices, and we've been talking about the choice that women have to cover up. But we also mentioned that the men have the choice not to stare at the women, regardless of what they're wearing or what they're not wearing. You guys are not supposed to look, and I'm pointing at, at myself at the same time. I'm pointing at you and pointing at me. None of us are supposed to look. And, but, and just because a guy has a white beard, don't think that he doesn't think like that, all right? All men, from the time they're like uh, 11 or 12 years old until they're dead, they're all looking and getting in trouble. Is, is that right? Uh, will you confess to that, Richard? <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to be uh, opposite here, but um, where I'm at in my age and everything, it, uh, I am so content and happy with Yeah, but the, I'm not talking about what? content, but I'm just saying uh, that uh, I, I never I loses look. the interest. <laughs> yeah, you lose interest and I don't look. It's just not interesting to me. Okay, let's find out... Habib, what do you say about that? Uh, honestly, I'm at the age that when I talk to a sister, I treat them more like they're my biological sister, if you know what I mean. It's like, and you don't have these thoughts about your sister, right? So I, I this is how oh, I Oh, you guys are goody two shoes. I, I know uh, your your wives are, you, are watching yeah. you right now. I got it. I got yeah, it. Yeah. See, All we, right. We, <laughs> see, we, we're, we're, we're located. <laughs> uh, we're not tempted to go to the beach. <laughs> California, you're full of beaches. And uh, women don't dress well on the beach. And uh, here no. in Michigan, it, it gets colder and we don't have that problem. We have a and the closest it's beach exciting. to here, it's three oh, and a half hours the drive. The there you go. We have a All right. Well, we got to wrap it up. Wrap that's up. that's yep. our that's our wrap call. Whenever they call us from the studio and they say, "Guys, wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up." So, Habib, I'm going to let you wrap it up tonight. If you don't mind, you go ahead. Tell everybody what to do. 
Stay tuned and stay guided with Guide Us TV. Guide Us TV, I like the way you say that. This is Yusuf Estes, and I'm looking for something. Actually, I'm looking for someone. Is that someone you? I want Dawa Partners, and you can be my Dawa Partner right now. It's real easy. Just go to DawaPartners.com, sign up, and join me. There are three things that I would like for you to be able to do. Any one of them, or all of them. Beautiful. Number one, you will make dua. So you can be our Dawa Partner, even if you don't go to the website, but I hope you do. Number two, share. Share this message and let other people know about becoming Dawa Partners. And number three, help us financially. Donate on a monthly basis, even if it's small. Allah loves the thing that you do regularly. Even if it's small, more than the thing that you do that's really big, but you only do it once. Join me as a Dawa Partner. Do it now. Click, 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 click. Ooh.